What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. We got a fun video today. Um, it has been absolutely horrendous outside, and I was supposed to go out and do some yard work, maybe go for a little hike and a bike ride, but I did not like the wind and the rain, and so I decided to come in after the yard work and just make a YouTube video for y'all. Don't have any new knives really that I wanted to go over, so I decided I would do a video on my everyday carry for March. So this has kind of been my rotation for March and what I've been carrying. Uh, but before we get too far, just wanna go ahead and say thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed to all of our videos and our channel so far. It has been absolutely a thrill this first month making videos and putting the content out there. So thank you for everyone who has supported us. If you haven't jumped on and started supporting us yet, feel free to subscribe at the bottom or hit the logo in the corner. We're gonna continue to keep making content, so we would love for you to see it. And as always, like and comment on any of these videos. I will do my best to reply to all those comments and just give you a little thumbs up, letting you know that I've seen it and giving you that back forth for liking our stuff here. So I'm gonna jump right into it with uh, the Kunwu Tao Compact over here. So if you've seen my channel and you've seen some of the shorts or videos I've done, this has been absolutely one of my favorite knives since I got it. I picked this one up about a month and a half ago and this just joined my line of Kunu knives that I already had. So I've got the Tau, the Tau Compact, the Mini Tau, the X Tau, the Zen, the Zen Compact, the Orion. I've got some of the Pulsars. I've got a Chad on the way, an S Tau on the way. So I absolutely love Kunu for what he does. And so it makes perfect sense that I have two Kunus actually in my rotation. This first one is gonna be the Tau Compact. And the main reason this one is in my rotation is because this knife gives me everything that I want. I love the profile of the knife. I love how minimalistic it feels. I love the ergonomics of it. And then the size particularly as well, that three to three and a half inch blade compact size comes down perfect for my pocket. And then I don't have to worry about it because it's so small. It also gives a really good edge and corrosion resistance with that LMAX steel. So that's been fantastic, but you get a whole lot more of the premium quality stuff. If you can see the jimping um, on the top here, that's been fantastic. And also the milling in the thumb right there along the top, you've got the Timascus pivot. So I don't need to do a review on this knife because I've already got one out there for y'all to look at, but this has definitely been in my rotation three, four times a week I carry this. Um, full disclosure, I carry two to three knives a day, so this isn't like, oh, I only carry one of these at a time. I'm usually carrying one from the top row, one from the bottom row, and then I'll carry this guy as well with me. We'll get into that, but this has been one of my favorites to go to, and this was actually in my pocket today before I started this video, so yeah. We'll set that down and move on to the next Kunwu in my recent rotation, which has been the Zen Compact. So the Zen Compact is really nice. The one thing this offers that the Tau Compact doesn't is just more fidget factor. I love the look. Someone posted on one of my shorts, they really liked that this was kind of a sci-fi look to it. I never thought of it that way, but it is correct. It does kind of have like a little bit of a sci-fi look to it. Um, but I do love the belly on this blade. If you see that right there, the belly on that blade gives you a lot of slicing action with this knife. So it's been absolutely fantastic to have this for some of those days I need a little bit more slicey action. But I also use this one quite frequently because of that fidget factor. And I know some people hate knives because they don't want to have a knife built just for the fidget factor. And I think this accomplished both. This has a lot of fidget factor with three opening mechanisms, but it also has a very useful tool factor to it. So it's not only giving you those fidgets that you need, but it's also going to give you a fantastic feel and usefulness to it. Moving on from the Kun Woos, I move on to my very first Shiro that I ever got here. So this is a Shiro Neon NL. I've got this one in the Chromax PM. It also comes with LMAX steel like these two had right here. But this one has been in my everyday rotation primarily because it is so slim. This knife is ridiculously invisible in my pocket. You can see the clip on the outside, but I can't feel it. It's lightweight. Um, it operates so well. It has a really good action, super smooth detent to it. Uh, the micarta on the outside has been fantastic to have. 
but then that blade profile allows me to do a lot of things with this knife that I can't with some of the others. So um, it's been really nice to have this one and just carry this one around. It does kind of give you that pocket jewelry feel because it is a Shiro, but this is one of the Shiros that's on the lesser end of the price spectrum. I believe you can pick these up for anywhere from five to 550, which is a lot, but it is not a $2,000 Shiro knife or a $1,000 Shiro knife. So uh, that is one thing that makes this one really nice as well. So this has been in my carry. Um, pretty much daily since I got it, which is about two weeks ago. And then we move on to this guy right here. So this is the Gavco. Oh, of course I feel it as I'm trying to do this. This is the Gavco Drop uh, Nurse Shark. So this is Gavco's design with the company Drop. You can see their little D on the back here. And this was the Nurse Shark. I originally picked this up because I was going to go to nursing school. A little history about me there. Um, since I've decided not to go to nursing school and I've pursued a different career field, but I originally picked this up because I was going to go to nursing school and I thought that there was a knife called nurse would be really cool. And, uh, before I picked it up, I only knew very little about Gabco. I knew he had some premium knives out there. I knew he was a really cool designer and I loved the way that this looked. It's a nurse shark. You've got the gills right here and the speed holes on the back. But this knife carries in my pocket because it is so small. Put this one up to the Tau, it is even more compact. You can see right there where you've got some space on it. Put it up to the Zen, same, more compact. Put it up to the Shiro, more compact. So it is a little bit thicker, but it does have that more compact feel and style to it. And so I carry this one. One, the color, really nice. And two, the compactness to it. And the blade is just phenomenal on this. You've got S35VN for the blade on this one right here. So you get a much more premium steel with this knife. And that is nice to have out there, not to worry about anything on that as well. So. Moving to my big Shiro over here. This is the Quantum Ursus. This one I have not done a video on yet for y'all. And so this one, there will be a video coming soon. But this is the Quantum Ursus Shiro. This is the biggest knife that I carry. Um, it's almost, I think it's actually larger than eight inches in length. So it is a big knife. You can't legally carry this in all 50 states, but I can carry it here in Arizona where I'm at. So I definitely do carry this. And this one is 100% pocket jewelry for me when I carry it. I don't use this for anything. Not that it's super nice or uh, delicate or anything because it does have that Chromax PM steel. So it's going to have some good uh, durability, edge retention, and corrosion resistance to it. But it is just a really beautiful knife, pretty knife. It's nice to have and carry and show off to people. This is the knife that I show to people who aren't knife collectors and their jaws drop and say, oh my gosh, that's what you carry? Um, and then I show them the world of collecting knives and looking at knives, and they wonder why people spend thousands of dollars at knives. And these same friends of mine will then go and spend $3,000 on a new wheel set for their bike. So um, it's just everyone has their own vices and collection and hobbies. And for mine, it has definitely been knives. So, yeah. So this one is in that rotation just purely for that pocket jewelry, but I love this knife, so it's in here right here. This is the Civivi Kai V. This is a slip joint knife. This one goes in that fifth pocket on my jeans, the one that no one really does anything with. I used to put guitar picks in there. Uh, a lot of time people put change in there as well. This little guy right here has been um, absolutely fantastic. This is a knife that when someone says, hey, we need to cut this box open, I can whip this out really easy, slice right through, not have to worry about it, and then slip joint it back together and put it right back in my pocket. You don't ever know this is there. Um, because it is a slip joint, I have found the easiest way to open it has been a two finger safe to open, um, a slow roll around, if you can get it, or just a really quick push there to get it down. It is a really nice knife. I don't really hand this one off to people because it's a slip joint. I don't want someone who's unfamiliar with knives to accidentally press on the back and get themselves. Uh, but this is one that I use and don't really worry about because it's like a $20 knife from Civivi. So these are cheap, they're easy. It's nice for what it is. Um, so I don't have to worry about it. And I carry this every day to do just some 
really, really small grunt work that I don't necessarily want to put some of the nicer knives on. Moving past the Kai V, we have this next Civivi right here. So this guy has been in my carry for a while. This is the Praxis Mini um, right here. I have it with the green G10 and then the black blade. Once again, similar to the Zen, you've got a really nice belly for slicing here. Difference, this is a much smaller blade. So this has been a compact compact, <laughs> yeah, I would say. It's been really nice to have this liner lock in my collection and it's been really nice to have this in my everyday rotation. This is one when someone says, hey, do you have a knife? I have no problem handing this off to them to use, to mess with, and to open up boxes, cut whatever they may need to, and then they can give it back to me and I can sharpen it and make sure it looks good. But this has been a fabulous buy. I got this one to do a review on it because the Praxis has been more popular as of recent and it easily fell from just a review status to an everyday carry. And so this has been one that has been in my pocket with one of these two the last couple days um, that I've had it here. So that's been another fun one to have. Moving past the Praxis, we have the CRKT. Yes, I know, CRKT, boo, boo, boo. A lot of people have made comments that I've been carrying a CRKT and say, why are you carrying something that they sell at Walmart? This is the CRKT Pilar 3. I love this knife. So say what you want, you have your own opinions, but I absolutely love this knife. The ergos on this knife feel fantastic. They make a couple different versions. This one, I did get with the black G10. It is on um, caged ball bearings, so it has a really nice release open there, frame lock. And then you can kind of see it when I flip it over there. It has this brass uh, backspacer, and I absolutely love the brass backspacer on it. It's a stonewashed backspacer, just adds a little bit more accent, gives you that little lanyard if you want to. But this knife, has been with me for the last two years or so since it came out, and I absolutely love this knife. It has it was shown to me by a good friend of mine, Garrett. He was carrying this for a round for a while, and he said, check this out. I immediately went home and purchased the knife uh, from Blade HQ, I believe. I got it off Blade HQ. So this is the Pilar 3, and I love this knife. I mean, you can see it fits perfectly in my hand. The only thing I would change is adding a little bit of jimping on the top up here, but it's not bad because it is an easy, smooth transition. You're not, your finger doesn't slip off either side because there's no crown to the spine or anything, and you get really good control over the blade with it like that. Really good balance, really good feel. Uh, detent is not the best, but it uh, for I mean a $50 knife, this is not bad at all. So... I love this. I love some of the stuff that CRKT does. So you can bash them if you want, but as someone who is much more in tune with the knife world and knives once told me, you can't appreciate some of the expensive stuff until you've learned to appreciate the lesser stuff. And I really appreciate some of this lesser stuff down here. Moving past CRKT and Civivi, we move on to a Devo knife. So this is the Devo Growler, and this has only recently been with me for about a month now. And uh, if you don't know, this is Lefty EDC's company that he makes knives with. And this is, after, I mean, so this Devo knife has the Growler. When I first got it, I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, it looks cool. It's kind of fun. But this grew on me quite a bit. I really love the feel. I love the way it opens. I love the finish that they put on the blade. Um, the micarta choice for it was really nice. I believe it's 14C28. Um, it's not written on the, on the blade anywhere, but it's 14C28, I believe. Um, I believe these go for anywhere between 65 to 80. Uh, the one thing you have found is you've noticed there, and Devo does, or not Devo, <laughs> Lefty does have a video on it, is the opening mechanism. If you get caught in there, it can be a little tricky. So he actually has a video where he went through and kind of said, hey, here's the best way to open it if you're trying to work on your hand position. Makes it a little bit easier um, on you to get stuff through. But this has been in my rotation as well. This is another one that I have no problem handing off onto someone saying, yeah, go ahead and use this knife if you need to. 
by no means is this a cheap knife. I mean, it's it's in that budget category, uh, but it is a really well-made knife. Uh, this is a really good product, and I believe Devo has a new knife coming out here that they've got some pre-orders for, because I just put a pre-order on Blue Mountain Creek that I'm looking forward to picking up soon. And then last but not least, um, out of all these knives here, this is my most recent one. And this is the Kubi Ruckus. So I just posted a video on this a couple nights ago. And that was something that uh, before I posted the video, I had never heard of Sharif. And Sharif is the designer for this knife. After the video, I went ahead and did some research and looked at Sharif. And Sharif has his own YouTube channel. Um, you can go ahead and subscribe. He's got some really good content. He just picked up some sweet knives, I believe, from Blade Show Texas this past weekend. Um, so that gives you a time reference on when I'm recording this, obviously, if you if I don't post this right away. But, and uh, Sharif has another knife that you may know that he did that I picked up and I'll be doing a video on here once it arrives from Kaiser. But Sharif is Manganus Steel, um, which is the company that he works, uh, his, his company that he does um, his knives with. So, but this is the Ruckus. This is one of the budget knives that I carry that is absolutely built like a beast. The blade profile on this with the swedge at the top is absolutely beautiful. I really love the jimping on it right here. The one thing, and I'm not being, I might be being a little too picky here. The one thing I don't like is if you get a little too far here on the front, you can kind of feel that little edge in there, um, which I think, I think there's a purpose for it to be able to kind of hold in this way. But if your thumb comes up a little too far, you can feel that hot spot right there um, versus coming back down here. So you can't really push your thumb up a little too further on it. That rounded over would have been really nice. But it's a budget knife and it is a fantastic build for what it is. The detent on this knife is absolutely beautiful. It just drops like a hammer because of the weight there. And they put a nice little front flipper on it there. Missed that one. As you all know from watching my videos, I'm still getting used to front flippers and trying to get better with them. But it is a beautiful front flipper for what it is. So that's the Kubi Ruckus. And that has been my March EDC carry so far. Feel free to comment down below. What are you carrying? What do you guys have out there? Um, what's in your pocket on a day-to-day -day 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 basis? Is it something you see here? Is it something that I haven't looked at? Um, I would love to hear what you guys got out there. I know Vosteed is really popular. I wanna know how many guys are actually carrying some Vosteeds out there. So I just picked one up. We'll be doing a review on that soon as well. So thanks again for watching everybody. Um, until next time, TTFN.